I think it's going. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Tells me that my live stream is healthy. I hope that is so. It doesn't look very clear though. Let's see if I can um, focus the camera any more than this. Let's see. Maybe I need to lower it. Yeah, I think that white was throwing something off. Hello, Sly Fly Guy, Nintendo, and Jesus, and hello, Glub Glub, the Rub Rubs. Uh, it is not Gwenpool. Oh, that would have been a cool idea. But um, just uh, Batgirl. Batgirl is what I was thinking. Just sort of setting myself up. Um. I feel like that isn't quite in focus. Let's hope I don't regret this. So I'm going to turn off autofocus. No. Uh, like that. Is that good? Hello, Anja. I'm still setting a few things up here, folks. How does that look? Does that look all right to you all? Hello, Kiro. Hello, Ghost Dog. Hello, Cheddar Monkey. Hello, Lobo. Oh my goodness, what a what a full what a full uh, room. No, that doesn't look right. I'm, let me uh, zoom out. Let's see. Yikes. Alright, I think that's, I guess, the best I'm going to get it. Yeah. I think that... Hello, Lorena. Okay. Well... Whoa! What did I just do? Oh my god, I just bumped something really hard. Okay. Okay, hold on. I just spun a bunch of stuff all over the place. <laughs> oh, wow, Nintendo says that he's working on a... Um, inking a Frank from Donnie Darko. That sounds interesting. I uh, I like that movie actually. Is that uh, right about there's the top? Sort of mark it for myself. What what? Yeah. All right. Uh, no, I understand that inking uh, Frank would be uh, hard. He's got a lot of harsh shadows to him. So, let's see here. What do I... Oh, darn it. I um, just bought myself a new brush and a new ruler to uh, work today, and I uh, forgot to bring it here. Hello, comic book guy, and hello, Charles. This is... Wow, this is a great, uh, really full room. Nice to see uh, so many familiar faces. All right, well, I guess I'm working without a ruler and without uh, that new brush that I bought myself. So be it. Mm -hmm. oh, that was a little bigger than I meant to make it, but it shouldn't hurt. Just gonna lock in the cape real fast. Uh, my goal here is to use the cape, her hair, and the rope to indicate a sense of motion. This is really where I could have used that uh, new ruler. But I don't want to leave any of you. Um, yes, Batgirl. Batgirl is who I'm going to draw. Uh, with her... Um, New 52 costume. I think that was designed by um, 
Dave Stewart, maybe? I think I've got that right. And depending on how long I take on her, I may start inking some of these buildings that I quickly uh, dropped in. Some of these skyscrapers, but we'll see. I'd rather get the character right first. We'll try that. Let's see. Hello, CSNG. Wow, how many people are in here? This is a lot of familiar faces. No, oh, it says only nine. Okay, a few people left. Well, so be it. Uh, nice to have everybody here. Um, yeah, I've, uh, I've only ever tried to draw a Batgirl once, but uh, today's prompt was graceful. And I started thinking of characters that were sort of acrobatic, athletic, and uh, ultimately I was like, oh, I know who I haven't really drawn a lot of, but I think I would have fun working on. I think Batgirl would be an interesting challenge. I also feel like I uh, don't necessarily draw very pretty women, and I'd kind of like to make them prettier. So I need practice on that. <clears throat> and then I sort of gave her a trapeze uh, piece in um, in a nod to uh, Dick Grayson. Let's see. Uh, Anja says, just finished My Friend Dahmer, chilling novel. Would be an equally good movie, I believe. Well, my friend Jason has already seen the movie version of it, and he says that it's very well done. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing the movie version of it. But yeah, I, I believe I even made a short video on my channel recommending that book. I, it's it's quite good. Uh, oh, no, wait. I think I was talking about a different uh, book by Durf Backdurf, uh, Trashed, which is an interesting look at the life of a garbage man. Uh, but My Friend Dahmer is a great book, folks. Nintendo says, I hate drawing buildings. It's just not, it's not just a giant rectangle. It's so much more. Uh, I love drawing architecture personally. Kiro says that for him, drawing women has also been a challenge. And um, Nintendo says, I have no problem with beautiful women in comics as long as it's not too much sex appeal, like how Liefeld draws them. Yeah, I, 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 I want mine to be realistic, and that said, like, you know, I'm drawing, um, uh, you know, superheroes and stuff, so I also want them to be uh, uh, attractive people, generally, so, um, but I also need to balance that with, maybe for this one, I'm going more for cute, because Batgirl's kind of young, I don't really want to sex her up or anything like that, that that's not really what I'm interested in doing with this character but um but I do want her to sort of be attractive so it's tricky I'm, I'm trying not to you know make her a, a, a developed woman I, I don't know exactly what age I'd put on this character <coughs> but essentially something like older teenager is what I'm going for Uh, Aldi404 joins us and says, finally, I am able to catch you live. Are you, do you have a Pokeball? Are you going to catch me? People have been threatening to catch me for a long time. No one's been able to do so yet. All I can say is good luck. Anyway, I when I saw this costume, I loved how sort of uh, modern day realistic it was. In terms of like, uh, you know, there are snaps for having the cape clasp onto the shoulders. Uh, the boots look like actual like you know 
tough boots, not just some sort of spandex over feet. I, there, there were a lot of great details that I loved. Let's see. Cheddar Monkey says that he tried drawing Kyle Rayner as a pirate once, but it didn't come out well. And the ghost dog says, what do you think makes a person talented? Some people talk about bad childhoods and broken homes, but others say it's God-given. And yet some say it's practice and nothing else. What do you think? I think that your uh, background doesn't necessarily dictate what you have aptitude for. I think that some people do have an aptitude for certain types of art. Some people just have a, a really good ear and they can hear musical notes and so or, or maybe they've got like really good uh, finger control and muscle memory. That that might just be a natural gift that they have. Other people have like, you know, a near photographic memory and they can sort of draw from that and match what's in their head. So I do think that sometimes people are basically born with an amount of talent, a natural talent. However, I think that almost anybody can become better at something that they're interested in through lots of practice. I really do believe that. Um, so that's my two cents on the matter. Hold on. Something's come. Uh, pop up is covering the chat. What, what are the people saying? Sigmund says, what do you find the most gnarly thing in trash Mine was frozen dumpster juice. Um, it was a lot of nasty stuff, but I think it was like how uh, sometimes you'd have bags of like dirty diapers or something like that. And when the garbage compactor goes to crush it down, if you're not careful, sometimes that stuff like puffs up like some air gets caught in it and it will like explode backwards. So you have to always stand to the side when you're making the uh, garbage compact or part of, of a dump truck compact. Oh, that was scary. <clears throat> How much faster do you think you'd be working if you weren't interacting with us? Twice as fast? More? Yeah, at least twice as fast. I, I take breaks to talk to you guys and so on. Uh, Nintendo says, how's your cold? Couldn't make it yesterday. I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good. Um... Still got a little bit of a cough, a little bit of something in my throat, but overall, I feel good. I, I'm sorry, I'm a little confused because Attitude Era Gaming says, Why no leather face? Why? Oh, right! You were saying that you think I should draw a leather face. Uh, well, it just. When I heard the prompt graceful, I, I didn't think leather face. That's not the uh, first thing that came to my mind. That's all. If I suddenly get quiet after answering a bunch of questions, it is not me um, ignoring anyone or necessarily giving any extra thought to anything. It's, it's purely trying to focus on um, some small details that make me uh, concentrate a little bit harder. That's all. Hopefully that's obvious, but I just wanted to make it clear that it's uh, nothing you guys are doing. I just every once in a while go a little quieter while I focus on the drawing. I feel like, oh, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Lobo says, have you ever come across an older comic that used the word flick or flicking, but the L and I run together due to poor printing? I have and can't help but laugh. Yes. Uh, I think that these days, magazines and comics generally try to avoid those words when possible. And when it's a, you know, a, a word that's appropriate, they just make sure that the, uh, the font isn't going to trip them up. Let's see. Uh... 
Aldi 404 says, I love Burnside Batgirl. I, I, I'm not familiar with that version. Who, who's Burnside? I, I'm trying to think, and uh, that creator name isn't coming to me. I apologize. I, uh, I haven't read a lot of Batgirl, I have to admit. Um, I just really liked this design. And I was like, I want to give that a shot. I love how grounded it seems. That was my thought process. That was the extent of it. Oh, that looks kind of cool. I'll do that. That's pretty much what I sounded like when I thought this through. To the extent I think anything through. Have you worked at all on yesterday's drawing some more? That's from Geek Workshop. Uh, no, no. Um, uh, I only want to work on these Inktober drawings if I'm actually live streaming, if that makes sense. Um, you know, I might sketch something else, but um, I want to uh, I want to sort of keep all of the Inktober stuff that I'm live streaming actually live stream. So, uh, if I'm able to carve out a little time this weekend, I may go back to yesterday's drawing of Hong Kong and add some more detail because that would be fun for me. That would not really feel like work. That would just be fun. But um, I'm not going to do it unless I have time to live stream. All the 404 says it's the one you are drawing right now. Okay, I, I didn't realize that that was the uh, creator that that did this version. I'm I'm sorry. I I thought that uh, I thought that it was somebody named Dave Stewart that designed this costume, but I wasn't a hundred percent sure on that. So yeah. Um, the ghost dog says killing joke is overrated and over talked about that's possibly true um, I think that that's to a degree a product of being an Alan Moore comic and I think that um, you know when it came out it really was very strong for that period of time um, does it hold up quite possibly not it um, it may be, uh, I don't know, overly sensationalistic and not really develop anyone to any important degree. Um, that is something I've thought about a little bit, yeah. I'm not sure it's, uh, so amazing. But it's because it's like remembered as a product of its time. And when it came out, I think it was definitely among the stronger Batman stories that were coming out at that point in time. How do you feel about the Watchmen TV series or Spawn Salmon Twitch TV series? I don't have too much interest in the Spawn Salmon Twitch idea. Um, it's not really something that speaks to me that much, but um, Watchmen as a TV series has some potential. It really depends on what they can add to it, because I, I think if you're going to extend it into a long-form narrative, I'd be curious, you know, what you're doing with it. I don't know. It's funny. You know, like, it, it sort of bothered me, the idea of doing extra um, Watchmen comics, but it doesn't necessarily bother me to adapt it into another media. I, I, I don't, I can't exactly explain that logic, but, but there it is. Attitude Air Gaming says, debating on whether to buy Walking Dead issue 108 or Skybound exclusive beta figure. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Um, 
I'd probably go with the comic. But I tend to like comics more than just about anything else, even though I've got some other collections. Uh, ultimately, I want to read more stories. That's what interests me the most. Boy, I'm just noticing that um, even though I'm feeling better, that my voice is definitely still kind of nasally and weird. Uh, hope it isn't too obnoxious, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, CSNG says, did you hear tonight Megabots will be showing the USA versus Japan giant robot fight? It'll be in about an hour. No, I heard nothing about that. Uh, I don't know what that is. Megabots? Megabots. Is that a channel or a streaming service or, or a YouTube channel or, or what? What is it? It sounds cool, but I don't know it. Explain. Teach me. I'm doing that thing that I do where I uh, end up having fun with little details and forgetting the big picture. So in a second, I'm going to force myself to put this pen down, go back to uh, finishing the outline and the structure, etc. Have you seen that Black Panther trailer? It looks beyond great, says the ghost dog. Yeah, I think it looks cool. I think it looks great. I think that, yeah, what a cast. Um, there's a lot to be excited about that one, it looks like. I think it looks very fun, very interesting. And a little different than what we've seen so far. So I hope it's good. It looks cool so far. It will be interesting to see, like, you know, at some point, point, you know, Marvel's going to have to uh, reset, right? I mean, at some point, they'll either have to reboot things, or maybe they'll make a couple movies that aren't that good, that hurt their bottom line, so something's going to happen somewhere, uh, but so far, they're doing a good job. Overall, I'm very happy with their movies. I can't stand any TV show. Gotham, Daredevil, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., not a fan at all. I think Daredevil's quite good. Um, but I understand. I mean, it's, it's kind of weird to go from having these huge, big-budget spectacles and then sort of be told that the TV show is comparable. You accomplish different things with TV. You know, you, you explore your characters in a much deeper setting, a more intimate setting, but you really don't uh, have the, the ability to do the same level of spectacle, so it's kind of weird. It's, it's almost too bad, that, but it feels like they're competing whenever you have like a, a TV version of a comic versus all these movies. Um, I try to keep the medium in mind to, to set my expectations. So I'll, like a special effect 
on the flash will really impress me because I'm like, wow, they did that on like, you know, a weekly basis. That's but that same effect in a movie would be laughable. I'd be like, come on. You have how many millions of dollars? Different set of expectations. Whew, I missed some stuff, I guess. Uh, CSNG says Megabots is an American company that makes giant robots. They challenged a Japanese company, Sudabashi Heavy Industry, who also make giant robots, to a duel. Wow. Can I post a link to a teaser? Yeah, of course. I, I can't click on it, but if anybody else is interested, go for it. Um, hmm, that sounds cool. Have you ever had the thought that the Flash sees everything in super slow motion? This means that it must take around one hour just to listen to one word another person says. Uh, that would be the case if his powers were always on. But 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 if you think the Flash through, it, it doesn't quite track. He He's not always going at super speed because he gets surprised by things. And like you say, he... He would be insanely bored if everything was in slow motion. He'd, he'd lose his mind. So he, he has to sort of concentrate, in, in my opinion, to activate his abilities. He has to think about it. Uh, it it's not his natural default state. And I think that some of the comics, maybe it was the TV show, but I think it was the comics, explained that he can read a book really fast to, like, absorb that knowledge, but it um, enters his short-term memory, not his long-term memory. So he, uh, he can't just become su permanently super smart by, by just reading all the time. It's an interesting idea. <clears throat> okay. What are some of your favorite books, not comics? Asks Sigamigs. Cool question. Let me think for a second. Um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay. A Tale of Two Cities. Um... What else? What else stands out as exceptional? Or something that I can reread? I think one of my problems is that I, I have trouble going back to read an, another um, a book a second time, even if I love it, because I'm always instead curious about the next thing. So, so I don't revisit a lot. Um, I like... I like Shakespeare. I think you can learn a lot from his characterizations and story structure. I'd have to think about that, but there's a few. Mike L says, I think after Infinity War and whatever part two is called, a Nova movie would be a would be perfect with the destruction of the Nova Core. Sure, yeah, that could be very cool. Johnny Dropkick says, I'm watching from my bathtub. That means you're Mr. Bathtub. Hello! I'm Mr. Bathtub! What's going on in here? Well, hello, everybody! It's me! Mr. Bathtub! Well, I hope you're doing all right in there. Lorena Escalier says, the story of the killing joke is okay, the art and the storytelling is excellent. Totally agree with that. Yes, I mean, Brian Boland is definitely a uh, favorite artist of mine. I can't wait to uh, do an episode about him at some point. Big fan of, of his work. Um, so, yeah, the storytelling, uh, he, 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 yeah, he, he kind of makes the killing joke 
special. Oh, Mr. Bathtub! I wish I could uh, turn on an echo for my voice so that, like, I actually sounded like Mr. Bathtub. What about Fant Fantastic? Does anyone else think Annihilus was supposed to be the villain? Doom even kind of looked like him. I did wonder about that. Yeah, I agree. I wonder if they uh, changed that idea somewhere, like, kind of late in the process. They were just like, oh, we're scared of using a character that the mainstream audience hasn't heard of before. Let's... Let's just go with Dr. Doom after all. I think it's definitely possible. I don't know at what point they made that decision. Because clearly, like, you know, the movie sets up Dr. Doom as one of the main characters from the beginning. But Yeah, maybe somewhere in the design process they, uh, they just sort of go, eh, just make him Dr. Doom, no one will care. I'll uh, speak up in just a moment. I just don't want to make any glaring mistakes here. Hmm. I don't know, maybe I get, um, okay, people are talking about the killing joke back and forth. The uh, Geek Workshop says, what's the most influential comic book in modern times, 2000 to present, in your opinion? Ooh, the most influential comic after 2000? I have one idea in my head. I'm thinking it through. After 2000, that's it's not. That's a pretty limited pool, all things considered. Like as to what would have been influential after 2000. I think the. Um, I think the Grant Morrison, Frank Quitely run on. Let me think. I think their run on New X-Men had a lot of influence both in how artwork was looked at and, and which artists became popular. A little more realistic, not necessarily as beautiful. Uh, Large-scale storytelling, big plot ideas, still plenty of room for character development, sort of rebooting previous ideas in new context, and dealing with our sort of uh, post-9-11 trauma when they approach sort of big disasters and stuff like that and how it makes the characters feel thinking of how they destroyed Genosha in that one. Yeah, I think New X-Men. Kiro says, how many comic book artists have you met? Hmm. How many comic book artists have I met? 
Um, boy, I don't know. Uh, maybe. A hundred? Two hundred? Jeez, I... I don't know. More than I can remember, like, naming. If I sat here and started to name all of the ones I've met. Doesn't mean I'm friends with them or anything, I just... How many have I met? A lot? <laughs> a lot. Um, hmm. Boy, I've missed a bunch of things um, in this chat. Sorry about that. Uh, Kiro says that he's met John Romita Jr. and Eric Powell, both at the Puerto Rico Comic Con. I've met Eric Powell, but I've never met um, John Romita Jr., and I do like his artwork quite a bit, but... No, I've, I've never met him. Yeah, I remember going to um, <clears throat> a dinner with a bunch of um, comic creators maybe in 2006. <clears throat> and I sat next to uh, Eric Powell and uh, we had a good time. I think I made him laugh a few times. But I don't know if he'd remember me now. Like I say, that was probably something like 2006. So, a while back now. Good night, though. It was fun. I think uh, Tony Moore's wife organized that one, if I remember correctly. Seems like something Kara would do. All right, what else is being asked? Uh, Huntress is a great character. Do you have any C-list characters you enjoy? Um, yeah, I do. I have a soft spot for Darkhawk. And for Speedball. I, I like both of them. I would, uh, yeah. I think I could have a lot of fun working for either of those guys. There's probably some others that I'm just not thinking of right now. Well, is it fair to call somebody like Metamorpho C-List? I mean, he's been around for a long time, and I think he's been in some great stories, but I don't know that he's that famous or really been used in a big way, so I don't know if he's B-list or C-list. C-list seems to almost imply that like the character's a little lame in some level, and I don't think Metamorpho's lame, so I'll, I'll, I'll say that he's B-list, not C-list. I was about to say him, but that's probably not fair. How long are you going to make these live streams? Until the end of the month? Just asking. Uh, that's that's my current plan, yeah. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with them. There's a small part of me that's like, oh, you know, maybe I should be drawing more. But uh, it's easy to say that, like, now in the moment when I sort of do have an end point. And if I committed to doing this every day, that would eat up a lot of time that I could be spending on planning out videos, working on actual, like, paying comics work, etc. 
you know, like I have a full time job that I have to balance. I I want to be able to also spend time with my friends and family. Um, and so for like one month, I'm I'm kind of cutting a lot of that out. Um, I don't know if I'd want to commit to something like that on a long term basis. But right now I'm having a, a lot of fun doing this. So right now the current plan is through the 31st. Mike L says, what underused villains in movies do you think could be utilized in an amazing way? For example, I think a Spider-Man movie with Kraven and the Chameleon would make for a great and completely different take on a Spider-Man movie. Uh, yeah, well, that would have honestly been what I suggested as well. I think that that would be really interesting to tell sort of a Kraven and Chameleon story and maybe somehow roll in a big chunk of the uh, Craven's Last Hunt idea. That's that's my thinking. Uh, Michael Wisman just joined. He says, loving the drawing today, the DC Icons action figure of this Batgirl is one of the best from that line. I haven't seen that. I, I, I love this design, so I would be very curious to see that. I'll, I'll keep that in mind if I... DC Icons action figure. Tardis Rider says... If you were to ink over another person's pencils, would you prefer detailed work or rough work? Hmm. Detailed. Yeah. I think so. I'd, I'd, I'd worry too much about ruining somebody's artwork if I had to interpret it a lot, unless we were already very close and I had that understanding. Otherwise, I'd want it to be pretty detailed. Uh, let's see. Mike says... I think you should try to do one every other week or so. That would be awesome. Seems like you've got a small community built here already. I that that's that's true. I I love talking to you guys. This is it's great and I'm just trying to balance that against well, you know, what else is going on in life, but it will if I if I don't continue doing these that will hurt. That will hurt, because I do really enjoy talking to um, everybody here. I'm, I'm like blown away by how smart and creative everybody here is. So that's pretty wonderful. We'll see. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe I could do like you know a once a week type thing. If uh, that that would be at least some sort of a compromise have to think about it. Hmm. Just thinking. I love this shirt, by the way. It reminds me of the Big Lebowski. Yeah, I guess I'm the uh, extra-large Lebowski then. <laughs> uh, Attitude Era Gaming says, For starting a Walking Dead comic collection, should I get key issues or just common issues? Uh, oh, if you're talking about actually collecting it? As compared to just reading it, <clears throat> am I? Uh, I would. Uh, I mean, if you're going to collect it, I that implies to me that you already like it. So I guess I would per personally approach it going after issues that meant something to you personally. Uh, that's how I would go after. Yeah. That's what makes sense to me.
<clears throat> Anja says, what is the difference between Bat Girl and Bat Woman? Uh, age is one thing. Uh, well, they're, they're both different people. Um, geez, I keep thinking of the original uh, continuity uh, with, where Bat Woman was Kathy Kane. Is, is that still the case? Somebody, I haven't really read a lot of stuff post New 42. So somebody else maybe should jump in and explain um, who uh, who Batwoman is. Um, they can probably do a better job than I can. But Batgirl is uh, Barbara Gordon, Commissioner Gordon's um, daughter. Have you read any Star Wars comics lately? Asks Aldi. Hmm. Um. Probably not this past year. Um, last ones I was reading was, uh, I read the Princess Leia series, I read the, uh, Darth Vader series, I think that ended, uh, the one where he was teamed up with, like, a psychopathic droid and, uh, a, uh, sort of, um, what would you call it, like, a, an archaeologist of questionable, uh, morals. Um, so I guess I'm probably behind now. Yeah. Who's, uh, is it still Jason Aaron writing it? Or is somebody else, um, on board at this point? For the main title, anyway. Because when I was reading it, Jason Aaron was writing it. He was doing a good job. I liked it. Uh, apropos of nothing... I miss the old comics buyer's guide. <laughs> yeah, I remember when that was one of the very few publications about comics. Uh, get that hoping for a little bit of content. Uh, mostly just a price guide. Yeah, was, there used to not be any any media about comics for the most part. You'd have to get like Oh, what was that? There was a magazine that, that was published by the people that made, like, Fangoria and stuff that I think was about comics. It wasn't very good. It's not coming to me right now. Yeah, long time ago. Nintendo says, you should do a video where we send in our personal work over Facebook or something to you, and you critique it or geek over it. That would be awesome. Um... I'm not against doing something like that, but I I don't I don't want to like offend anybody by like you know saying oh this isn't for me. I mean I don't know. I mean right now I just sort of do a review show of like you know stuff that we can all obtain. I'd feel kind of bad if I hurt somebody's feelings by uh, you know cr criticizing their work. Uh, I don't know. If I'm going to do a, a critique, I'm going to be honest about it. So that's that's my only caveat. I'm not again. It, if it was something that people wanted, I'd, I'd be willing to do it, I guess. I don't know. question is whether they'd want it. What's this? Oh, this is my fine brush. I want a medium brush. Comic book guy says, what comics that you liked as a kid, what comics that you liked as a kid that you still pick up from time to time? Oh, um, Spider-Man, uh, theoretically Batman, although I guess I haven't done that in a while, but I like Batman a lot, so I might. Uh, mm, it's probably about it. I mean, any superhero comics kind of count for me. But, but Spider-Man and Batman were the first superhero books I was picking up for myself, and, uh, and I still really love both of those characters. 
Maybe it's because it was the first ones that I was introduced to. But, yeah, I like those characters quite a bit. Alright, so I was about to, like, not ink some of this stuff too bold, but um, I'm going to say the heck with it and see how it comes out. Hope it looks good. Why not? Eh, so far so good. Got some more to do there. miss here. Anjo says, isn't it strange that Batman can have all high-tech equipment, but he never thought of making a pair of prosthetic legs for Oracle? Not very generous, eh? Yeah, you have to just sort of not think about that aspect of things, because uh, it doesn't necessarily make a logical sense, but it might sort of make thematic sense you, that they wanted to keep Barbara Gordon uh, for a long time um, as Oracle. So I can already tell that I'm really not going to have time to do anything with these buildings because I'm having a hard enough time just focusing on getting some of the detail on uh, Batgirl right. But that's okay. I'm having a good time. Hmm. Have you ever seen Comic Book the Movie? It was directed and stars Mark Hamill. Very good comedy. Uh, that's from The Ghost Dog. I did see it. I don't remember it very well, but I know I saw it. It must have come out quite a while ago at this point. Um, does does Mark Hamill play sort of a um, a nerdy comic book store owner in that? Is, is that I, I think I'm remembering that. Milos says that he got a YouTube notification right on time as always. Uh, Mike L says Wizard. No, there was a there was a magazine before Wizard that would sometimes talk comics and just sort of, you know what? I might be thinking of just Starlog, which was all sorts of sci-fi. It was a pretty thin magazine, but it was color and you know they'd talk about whatever was popular. I don't know. I think that there might have been another one too, like that that I'm just not thinking of, that came out before Wizard. Um, anyway, uh, Kiro says, what do you think of the status of the comic book industry in the next 10 years? In, in 10 years, I think things could look uh, very different. I think that we could definitely still have um, the characters that we know and a lot of the creators that we know, but I think that like the uh, publishing aspect could, could potentially change significantly. I, I, I just feel like... Um, that there are problems in the uh, production model. I, th I think that they need to find ways to make it um, more affordable to new readers. And I think that uh, I think we should l look to how other countries are doing it because Japan's got it going pretty well compared to us. Um, and we should take full advantage of. Uh, the digital options at our fingertips. I mean, and also, like, why does a digital version of a Marvel comic cost me as much as a print version? That's not, that's not fair. That's not right. They need to correct that, in my opinion. We'll see.
Royfield Brown says, I love your comic tropes. Well, thank you. I love making them. So that's that's a good match. <laughs> Let's clean this up a little. Okay, I see where I need to focus. How long do you take to research your comic book tropes? Um, good question. It it varies. Some of this stuff I I uh, I just happen to know. You know, I, there's a lot of useless comic book history knowledge in my head. So a lot of it I know already. Um, and then I, uh, I make a calendar that's planned out like, you know, at least six months into the future. And, but I allow myself to deviate from that every once in a while. But I still like, I make plans for like what the topic could be, you know, what creator or what, um, sort of bit of comic book history or what character I want to cover. So then I um, then I have to work on like maybe tracking down the issue that I want to review or reading up what issues are relevant. So I'm sort of always working pretty far ahead um, with lots of ideas, but they don't all come to fruition. You know, I don't have, I don't like take it all, all the way to um, a finished episode, um, if that makes sense. So it's a little hard to describe in super specific terms of like where I am with any one thing, but um, I would say. Boy, that's hard to say. Um, you know, everything all sort of balances out at the end that I'm able to do a weekly episode. Um, I probably put in an extra five to eight hours of research when it comes to sort of writing down my outline for the episode. And then I probably do, you know, another three to five hours of research when it comes to like sort of uh, uh, getting the images that I need. Um, it's hard to explain. Someday I, I'll, maybe I'll make a video of, uh, of the overall process. Um, you know, it might be a little dry, but you know, for certain people, I think it would be interesting. So, so that's something I'll, I'll, I'll give some thought to. Mike L says, honestly, and I probably might catch some flack for this. I'm not a big fan of the realistic turn comics have taken. I know they're not realistic when I say that. Uh, Keelan says that he's here. Now I can start. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Mike says, I don't know if what I mean comes across in what I say. No, I mean, I think I, I understand what you're... Well, maybe I don't. I, I shouldn't be too presumptuous. Um, comics can sometimes take themselves too seriously, especially superhero comics. So, if that's sort of what you mean, I sort of know what you mean. If that's what you mean. All right, I'm going to go back to the questions in just a sec. I just feel like I want to do a couple details. I'm having fun with this one. I had a lot of fun last night, but I'm having fun tonight too. Thanks all for joining me. Appreciate it. 
I'm sorry if I've missed a question. Feel free to ask it again. I mean, I might have just missed something here and there. <clears throat> Royfield Brown says, thanks for the shout out. I do a podcast called Friday 15. I would love to get you on soon. Well, I'll uh, try to give it a listen. Uh, well, what's it about? Anja says, what's a podcast? A podcast is um, kind of like a, uh, a radio show, but you're just, uh, you know, you're recording it at home or in a studio, and then you release it online t for people to listen to whenever they feel like it. So you're not really broadcasting live most of the time. You're recording it, and then you have time to edit it. Keelan Powell says, I can tell you were talking about Spider-Man against Pot back in April. You plan ahead far. Um, yeah, I, I do. I do. I, 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 plan, I plan ahead pretty far. Um, but I also will sometimes go, okay, well, uh, something happened recently. Um, Len Wein passed away. And I said, you know what? I'd rather talk about his work. So I give myself permission to take something out and go like, that can happen another time. That, that just sort of goes in the idea file for later. Um, so I give myself permission to do stuff like that and sort of react kind of quickly. Or I say, oh, you know what? Like, I've done two or three kind of serious uh, episodes lately. Like, um, it's time to do something really crazy and funny and, and I hadn't thought of that so time to back some stuff up and put something funny in or you know things like that I mean I, I try to vary it up you know I want to show some some comics from foreign countries I want to show some older comics I want to address current stuff that people are, are reading now I want to I want some variety so that there's something for people that are just interested in comics in general I don't want it to like get so specific that I'm only covering Marvel and DC stuff from today, if that makes sense. Uh, Kuro says, the name of the magazine before Wizard is Comic Scene. I think you're right. I think that's exactly the, 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 com uh, the magazine I was thinking of. Um, and I'm pretty sure that it's long since uh, stopped being in print. <clears throat> uh, John White says, the Spider-Man and Pot episode was great. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Roy Field Brown talks about his podcast. It's an interview with music. Okay. Uh, Keelan Powell says commas would have made that sentence well better. Okay. Roy Field Brown says I've had politicians, artists, comic nerds, and actors on. That's cool. I used to do a podcast for about seven years, and it was about TV, uh, specifically sort of like nerdy sci-fi type TV, and uh, I got to interview like some writers and actors from shows that were on at the time. It was kind of fun. Doctor Who, and Battlestar Galactica, and Lost, and Fringe, Game of Thrones. Got to talk to um, George Martin, got to talk to Stan Lee, those were fun. Interviews, interviewing is a, um, it's an art, it's an art to, uh, to really listen and bring out the best in your guest. It's not easy. I love good interviewers. I, I think uh, I think Conan O'Brien is a good interviewer. I really do. I think he listens and reacts appropriately. What else? <sighs> Anja is asking about where you can find podcasts. YouTube? Um, I mean, you can, but mostly people will get them on stuff like iTunes or Stitcher. Uh, just Google, just Google podcasts on Joe. I'm surprised you haven't heard of them. They're pretty common. Uh, John White says, any plans to pick up with the podcast again? 
Um, no, no, I haven't done it for quite a while now. So uh, I, I, I just sort of got burned out after a while and, and wanted to move on to something different. And honestly, something that I could sort of do more myself. I used to do it with a, with a whole crew. They still make the show, but I, and, and I'm, I'm friends with the, the, the main guy that does it, but I don't listen anymore. So I really couldn't tell you what it's like now. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was fun. It was, it was great while it lasted. I just, you know, seven years is a long time. So, uh, eventually I just needed a break. I needed to do a new project. It was time. Whoops. Hmm. Darn it. His face is fairly small, so it's tricky to get the details right and make her look the way I have in my head. Uh, okay, people are talking about podcasts. Mike L says Harmontown is probably my favorite. I mean, it's my favorite. Although my all-time favorite is the Grandma's Virginity podcast. That's my all-time favorite. But anyway, um, yeah, I used to do art for that show sometimes. Grandma's Virginity podcast was the podcast by, uh, Justin Roiland that he made right before Rick and Morty took off and uh, he and uh, Jackie Buscarino and Ryan Ridley were uh, all hosts on that and I, I think it's just one of the funniest shows out there I think it's fantastic Uh, CSNG says, I've noticed some realism stuff. There was a Miss Marvel issue that was about people, about getting people top vote that felt a bit too mundane and heavy handed. I didn't read that. I'm not sure. People are still talking about podcasts and stuff. Podcasts are not popular in my side of the world. Any particular suggestions? I mean, there's so many hundreds of them out there. It, it's, it's really hard to say like what it, it, it depends on what you like. There's podcasts for everything. I mostly listen to comedy podcasts, and then every once in a while something more serious like a, a Serial or something like that, uh, personally, but yeah. Where are you from, Anja? Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to just guess. Tell us where you're from. If you don't mind. I'm not trying to put anybody on the spot here. Might help us with recommendations and such. Or at least understand the questions. But you don't have to. <clears throat> Aldi404 says, What comic book artist would you consider as bad, quote-unquote, as Rob Liefeld? Hmm. Uh, so, you know, that sort of depends on the individual, right? Like what, what people like. And, and I don't care for somebody like Greg Land. I, I, I don't think, and, and it's not about necessarily the, the photo realism. That doesn't bother me. I, I guess I just sort of feel like his characters um, tend to look, the same, and, and, they, and they look very, like, um, referenced from pornography specifically. Uh, I think that 
there are other artists like maybe Tony Harris that do sort of photorealistic stuff, and, and that doesn't look bad to me. But I don't really care for Greg Land's approach. But that's personal, isn't it? It's like it's in the eye of the beholder. I, I, I don't know. Hmm. It's an interesting question. Is there anyone out there in comics that has the kind of sort of vitriol against them that Liefeld does? Be I, I do feel kind of bad sometimes that I made that episode just because some people really love to beat up on the guy and, and that wasn't it really what I was doing. I mean, I think I was honest in the episode that I used to love it when I was a teenager and my taste simply changed. And then I was trying to approach it like, hey, these are the things this guy does regularly. I was trying to be fair about it. I was not trying to necessarily just pick an easy target and beat up on him. That's, that was not my goal. Um, but I'm trying to think if there's like anybody else in the industry that sort of gets that same level of, um, of anger towards them. I don't know. Okay, people are talking about different podcasts that they like. Yep. Have you read Matt Fraction and David Aha's Hawkeye Run, asks Michael Wisman. I'd love your opinion on it or even a Comic Tropes episode on it. I have to think about like what I would do with Comic Tropes. I don't know if I could do it on something as specific as their Hawkeye Run, but I have read it, and I love it. I think it was great. I think it was a breath of fresh air. I think, it, I think that that's... Uh, their Hawkeye run is inspired. Brendan Sellers says, I think it's all su subjective. For someone out there, Liefeld inspires them in a way Kirby inspires other artists. I think that's true. He's got a good point there. Uh, Brendan continues, I think every artist has value because you never know where inspiration will come from. Yeah, I, I think that that's a totally fair opinion. Uh, Johnny Dropkick says people beat up on John Romita Jr. Is that true? Like, honestly, I did not know that. I consider myself a fan of John Romita Jr. And I have not come across people hating on him. And I do understand that, like, sometimes his work is a little rushed and it can look weird. But when he's got time, I think he's one of the best artists out there. I think he's so good. Huh. Huh. I gotta read up on that. I did not know that. Uh, blah, 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 blah. There's a bunch of different uh, follow-ups here. Milo, Milos, Milos says, "What's your opinion on GamerGate? I've heard you talking about that for a moment. Uh, I don't think I've ever brought it up. Uh, I don't think anybody's asked me. Um, and I don't think I'm an expert, but it." Uh, so I don't know, like, you know, like, I don't know how to say which side I'm on, but I, I can say what I believe, and I believe that uh, overall uh, it was incredibly ugly and incredibly mean-spirited to women. I definitely believe that. Um, I did read that um, Steve Bannon uh, was definitely funding... Uh, several people that were posting like sort of uh, hate speech to sort of like rile up a base that he would then use politically to vote for in, in the way that he wanted. Uh, he's done some weird stuff, man. He, he thinks long term. He's, he's smart about what he does. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, an ugly situation um, that has definitely hurt the gaming industry overall. And I definitely also see that it's probably something that, that, that seems like it's just about to, to hit in a big way in the comic book industry. And that really depresses the hell out of me. I, I really do think that, like, pretty soon uh, these people that are, like, saying that there should be, like, less diversity in comics and 
people that are okay with it. I think that they're really close to coming to, you know, just just screaming at each other. And, and it's like, well, you all like comics. Can't you just agree that, like, the medium is great and everybody just reads the stories that they enjoy and that's that? I don't know. I, I guess I don't see the point in... Um, trying to argue that a certain type of story is, is, you know, bad for the industry. It's like, let, let the market sort itself up, sort itself out there. So. Anyway, I guess this got pretty political. Uh, you are catching me also. I'm a little tired, so I'm not really able to espouse everything that I believe and, and everything that I know too well unfortunately for me um, it's something I'd be happy to go into more detail at some point after I've had a little bit of time to um, you know collect my thoughts and uh, and so on Ho hopefully I've at least sort of made it clear where I stand um, I mean I'm all for everybody Ooh, what did I miss? John White says that it's true. J.R.J.R., at least in my opinion. Oh, I didn't know that people sort of hated on him. Ah, Anjo says he's from India. Well, that's pretty exciting. I don't know. How did you come across my channel? I, I'd be very curious. Uh, uh, I guess, like, as in, do you like American comics? And, and you just found me on YouTube from that? Um, that would be interesting. Michael Wisman says, Personally, not a fan of Ramita Jr. as a regular artist. I enjoy when he takes his time and really applies his style to a story, though. For example, Kick-Ass. Yeah, and I don't think Kick-Ass 2, he did a very good job. I, I'll, I'll say that. But I, I think that there are some things that he did in Spider-Man that were fantastic. He did, like, runs on X-Men. Spider-Man and Thor that are all fantastic. Just really good. I'm sure you've said this before, but who's your favorite artist of all time? Who's inspired you the most? Are they one and the same? Hmm. I mean, my favorites are, are guys like um, Will Eisner, Jack Kirby, um, John Romita, Sr. and Jr. Um, who else? Um, Dave Johnson, I think, is incredible. Uh, yeah, I'm coming up blank right now. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly pretty tired, folks. I, I can't think of some of my favorites, but the, the, those are some that inspired me. This is a completely different topic, CSNG asks. What's your favorite kind of pizza? Um, just a pizza with meat. I like pepperoni, beef, stuff like that. I'll eat all sorts of pizzas, but my favorite is just, I like meat. Mike L says, Miles Morales and Spider-Gwen are examples of diversity done right. I agree. I love both of those characters. I sincerely do. I think that they're great. Uh, Milos says, see, that's a common misconception from the people on the outside. They are not necessarily anti-diversity, but how those types of characters are used, like political chips, and most are written badly. Uh, I, yeah, that's up to the uh, individual to decide, I suppose. What do you think about the Doomsday Clock DC Comics event, the so-called Watchmen sequel? Uh... To me, it doesn't really work that well. I thought that Watchmen as a story, <clears throat> it ended somewhere where, you know, we felt like, I felt like we were done with that story. Um, and I don't feel like those characters really fit with uh, mainstream superheroes. So to me, it's, it's, I don't know, it doesn't really work for me. Uh, that said, I haven't seen the full execution. Maybe they'll surprise me, but uh, eh, I'm not too uh, too excited about the idea. I don't know if I'll... I probably won't be reading it. 
but that's okay. Maybe it'll be good. Mm -hmm. uh, John White says, I loved John Romita Jr.'s work on The Man Without Fear. Yeah, you're right. I, I almost forgot about that one, but his uh, collaboration with Frank Miller, uh, that, was, that was really good. Yeah. I am starting to get pretty hungry. What time is it my time? Oh, only 7.16. Not that late. Not that late. I'll keep it going a little longer, because I am having fun with this drawing. Um, I don't feel like I've had the best answers to everybody's questions, but i um, just a little tired. So I'm not, I feel like I'm not thinking uh, as fast as I normally do. I feel like I'm thinking in slow motion, if that makes sense. Um. <coughs> Brendan Seller says, I love that Batgirl. She reminds me a bit of Frank Miller meets Cliff Chang. You should check out Paper Girls if you haven't, by the way. I have. Paper Girls is great. It's really cool sci-fi. Um, Anja says, I am with you since early last year when you started. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Milos says, the very bad characters like America Chavez and now sadly Squirrel Girl are overshipped and retailers can't sell them and more and more are going out of business. Uh, retailers in comics have been going out of business since the 90s. Uh, that model was never really going to work. Just, yeah, there's... there's too many, basically. There's too many comic book retailers, and too many of them are run by people that are fans of comics and let that dictate their business decisions. You need to order what your particular store, like your readers, are interested in reading, and don't try to speculate and invest in all sorts of extra copies. But that doesn't happen a lot of times. I'm not saying that every retailer is guilty of this. But there are a lot of retailers that do a terrible job of uh, ordering, and they they screw themselves. Um, it's it's been a problem for a long time, and they just get propped up by like sort of eating, cannibalizing, you could say, uh, the existing comics fan base. They just keep like uh, delivering what the existing readers want and and that's just a terrible way of doing business to to play only to your core you got to keep getting new clients new customers uh, that and it's not just retailers doing that like that that's the fault of the publishers they're they're not looking enough to reach out to new readers. Anyway, it's frustrating because they could do, be doing a better job there. Johnny Dropkicks agrees. Paper Girls is awesome. John White says, regarding Frank Miller, I just finished uh, Dark Knight Master Race and it was interesting. I didn't even bother reading that one. I just didn't think it was going to be for me. Uh, let's see. Uh, John White says, another upvote for Paper Girls. Cool. Uh, Kira says, I think this is great. Batgirl rocks. Johnny Dropkick says, Squirrel Girl is one of the best comics Marvel is putting out right now. It's hilarious. I mean, personally, I like Erica Henderson's artwork. Uh, so Squirrel Girl is, I think it's funny and cool. I, I think, you know, 
it's a comic that a lot of people would like. Uh, I, I don't know, you know, it, it, nobody's forcing anybody to read these comics. They put out what they, 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 they guess uh, their readers want. And if the readers don't read them, they cancel it. It's, it's pretty simple business. So I, I don't think it's a big deal. Um, but I think that there's, there's a bigger underlying problem with superhero comics by the big two. They, they just keep sort of making comics for the same audience. And they're, they're not, I don't know, they, they listen to the existing audience too much. I say just ignore them. Just keep moving up, moving forward. I make it sound so simple. Good night, Michael. Anja says, I am a die-hard comic book fan. There was a booming comic book industry in India in the 90s. So from Hindi comics, I graduated to English comics and subsequently to graphic novels. Very cool. Ghost Dog says, I'm going to dip out. Good night to everyone and see you tomorrow night. Yes, you will. John White is curious, what are some popular Hindi comics? I'm curious, too. Um, Mike says, before I go, did you ever read Gru? I think it was called Gru. If you're talking about the series by um, uh, Sergio Aragones, I love Gru. Gru is fantastic. I can't wait to show you guys someday my original uh, art collection of, uh, from various comic book uh, write, uh, artists. Writers, yeah, my, my art by writers. Um, I've got a group piece in there that I'm really proud of to own. I've got Frank Miller. I've got uh, I've got um, John Romita Jr. I've got a bunch of people that we've been talking about tonight. Um, yeah, someday I'll do that as an episode. That'll probably take a little less effort than doing a full sort of researched episodes. So, so someday I'll do that. Interesting questions tonight, folks. <laughs> yeah, you can rest easy now. Have you read Jeff Smith's Bone? I love Bone. That's that's one of my all-time favorite comics. And that's another artist who uh, I own original art by. Um, yeah, Bone is fantastic. I think that, that's, that, that was... When it was coming out monthly, that was one of the ones I'd read first when I picked up the comics for that week. I got to see what happened in this issue. <laughs> I was I was very into it when it was brand new. I haven't read that one in a long time. I should pull it out and reread it. Hope it holds up. I would think so. Yeah, this isn't too bad. It's not not great. There's a few mistakes, but uh, overall, I kind of like uh, what I came up with tonight. Ah, Anja tells us some of the popular Hindi comics from India. They included Chacha Chadare, Bilu, Nagraj, Dhruva, Doga, Shaktiman, Bokal. Hmm, Michael Wisman has the same birthday as Jeff Smith. Uh, in India, there are, or in Indies, there's Corridor. 
Mumbai Confidential, Ravanian, I probably didn't mispronounce that, Ravanian, Ravanian, etc. Milos says, I have a lot of good Serbian comics to recommend, but none of them were ever translated. Ah. Yeah, that is the trick, isn't it? Getting uh, to, to getting out to a wider audience is just figuring out how to how to get that stuff translated. Uh, I love reading comics from other countries and seeing what like um, their versions of mythology and what they're interested in are. Uh, but it can definitely be tricky to uh, figure out what gets translated. Aldi says, I just discovered a Tumblr showing all of Greg Land's art that he copied, traced from other artists and porn movies. It's hilarious. Thanks for pointing me to his stuff. <laughs> Good. I'm, I'm glad somebody else has already compiled a bunch of that stuff so that I don't have to. <laughs> Let me, uh, I'm about to wrap it up, but I'm curious if uh, Batgirl has any sort of specific boots that I'm not quite getting right. No, they're just regular, regular boots. Okay. Okay. So... I would give like leather stitching there. Sort of do one of these. Abkibana Comic Tropes Sarkar. Alright, I think I'm done. I hope you can draw Ghost Rider one of these days, says Nintendude. Would love to see how you draw him. That's a cool idea. I like Ghost Rider. That I, I like that idea. I will um I will keep that in mind. Brendan Sellers says, if you could pick any artist and put them on any book. What would your pick be? Personally, I would love to see Sean Murphy on Hellboy or Ghost Rider. Dude, we're on the same wavelength there. That sounds fantastic. I love Sean Gordon Murphy's artwork, and he would be a really great fit on somebody like Hellboy or Ghost Rider. I, I can't top that. That's fantastic. I would, like, I would love that. Milos says most of the stuff is basically untranslatable because they take place from the 13th to the 18th century and are full of anachronisms that only make sense in the context of Serbian. Uh, Anja says, have you read Wilson by Daniel Clouds? I did, but not in a long time. I don't really remember it too well right now. Um, I'm going to call it a night, folks. Uh, yeah, but it's been a blast talking to you. Uh, thank you for all the wonderful questions. I think just, wow, what an intelligent audience uh, here. This was a really interesting community to talk tonight. Uh, Johnny Dropkicks uh, says, thanks, Chris. Uh, and uh, have fun in the bathtub, man. Uh, s stay in the bathtub. Uh, Nintendo says, what is your favorite horror movie? Uh, I think I've said before that it's um, Jaws. Uh, I really like Jaws. Um yeah, good questions, but I'm uh, going to call it. This is uh, what I came up with. If I'd had time, I would have, uh, a lot of this would have been really stark black outlines of buildings with um, certain lights lit up, and then this would have been um, kind of a negative space for potentially like kind of like a title or something was what I was basically thinking. Um, yeah, it kind of came out like how I was thinking. I just didn't have time to quite do as much detail as I was hoping for. Uh, 
Milos says that his favorite uh, is Oculus and Evil Dead. Yeah, Evil Dead 2 is way up there for me, just for the record. Uh, see you tomorrow. Looks great. See you, Keelan. Thank you for stopping by. CSNG, good night, sir. Uh, or ma'am. I think you're a sir, right? Did we already determine that? Yeah. Can't remember. Enjoy your dinner. About to have mine, says Michael Wisman. Cool. We can think about each other while eating. Uh, I'm taking off. Bye. You guys are great.